Hello again everyone. So we are now on um, number four of the sequence of um, or series of OCD talk. Uh, we are exploring together to find out what is it that causes OCD or turns this ritual or this fear of something that we have into a continuous and repetitious behavior that is interfering with our lives and it's called OCD. And now we want to go on and continue from the third one to the fourth one, which we discussed in the third one, why that ritual and behavior and conditioning is not qualified ever to become a belief, which it does, and that's why it's so difficult for us to deviate from it to the point that we think it's sacrilege and it's actually a sin because we have turned it into a belief and no longer we think why we're doing this we just think that we got to do this why because it's a belief it's something that I worship something that I've created but we don't focus the fact that what we are thinking it's a belief it's our own brainchild we created it and now we bow to it and we comply to it and we are stuck and we think it's something that it does something for us and it doesn't. So, in order to continue that, in this video we want to further discover why is it discredited, whatever it is that we do, because of the way we think and why that train of thoughts, why that way of thinking is actually not credible and is discredited for one more reason, beside all the other reasons that we mentioned in video number one, two, and three. So let's get on with it. And please don't forget if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you haven't liked the video, like it because we need exposure so more people can find us on YouTube and perhaps it could be of some help to some other poor souls like us, which we all in this world have some kind of OCD in the mild version, a hot version, a big version, one way or another, which I'm sure the ones who really think it's something needs to be discussed with the doctors, they would and they would be taking advantage of the science and the recommendations of the doctors as I am not a doctor, I'm not a psychologist, and I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm just discussing with you out of some knowledge and some pondering and some logics of how mind moves and I'm sharing that with you should you decide to use it to wean yourself away from this terrible habit and interfering with our, the quality of our lives or not. Now, so if we are so um, adamant and uh, convinced that this what we do is worthy of being belief and it's very important and it's actually credible then let's consider this do you think that you are the most intelligent person in the world I mean, if we have any intelligence, we definitely know that that would be a um, loaded question. Because if we have any intelligence, we know that knowledge is limited. And therefore, nobody can say that what I have is the unlimited limits of the knowledge. Which means nobody knows everything. Nobody is wiser than the other one. Everybody is wise in something, but there's always more to learn and no one can possess all the knowledge that it is. Therefore, no one can say that I am the wisest, most intelligent person in the world. Certainly, I can't say that. And I have a good idea that you being an intelligent person, you also would say, no, I can't say that either. So if that's the case, we all agree that we are neither one of us are the most intelligent or smartest person in the world because there is no such thing. So the others have pretty good understanding of stuff as well, at least most of them. So in that case, wouldn't we say that if what we think is necessary and a secret of survival and protection and way to achieve that elusive psychological security which is through the rituals that we have created and turn it into conditioning and we call it OCD if that is actually 
you know, the way to get ahead. And we are not the most intelligent person in the world, and others can figure out things like that as well. Then don't you think we shouldn't be the few who is entangled with this whole thinking process and ritual and cleaning this, cleaning that, and thinking that I gotta do this in order for good things to happen to me or not bad things to happen to me, and this is contaminated, I gotta do this, do that. Don't you think then everybody in the world, or at least 90% of them, or 70% of them, or 50% of them, would be doing this, that what we are doing? Because everybody wants to survive and be protected and safe. They all want it. They all want to be not uh, to be hopeful and not uh, have to fear about some things that might go wrong and all that. So they would all be motivated to do what we do in order to protect and bring about all the prosperity that they're hoping for into their lives. Wouldn't that? It's logical. Human beings are all the same in a way. If I need food, everybody needs food. If I feel that this is something I need to survive and to make that psychological security become known to me and apparent, then others are probably having the same need. And if this remedy that I do, that I'm convinced, believe that this is the way that I have to do in order to protect myself and bring prosperity and happiness and health and so on and take care of the fears, must be true, then everybody feels that way. Everybody would feel that necessity. Everybody want to accomplish the same as I hope to accomplish, to be away from harm. So, and if this is how I deal with it, and I'm convinced that this does the job, then wouldn't you think that then, if this is the way to do it, then everybody else in the world would have liked to do it, or at least 50% of them? How come they're not doing it? Yes, agreed that some of them could have in some degree here and there, but we don't see it as they don't see ours. But don't you think that there would be so much more, like to the tune of billions, if this actually was any way of legitimate or workable or productive way to handle these sort of concerns? Would you think everybody in the world would have done it? But we know they don't. They sit in their car, they get out, they go touch this, touch that, and shake hands and do whatever, you know, and they do whatever it is that they want to do, and if they really, you know, when they go home before they eat, they wash their hands, okay, that's good. They touch the doors, they don't turn the light switch off and up, uh, on and off five million times, they, don't have these weird, you know, the rituals to come home and put their shoes away or do this or clean that and I touch this, I touch that and all that. They, you know, don't you think they would all do that? But they don't do that. You can see them, you know, sit in the car, come out and no problem, they don't do weird things. You don't see everybody going to their car and getting a bottle of alcohol and just cleaning things and then rubbing it all their car because this touched that, that touched that, this contaminated and all that. Because, you know, if it's contaminated, well, it's in the air. I'm breathing the fucking contaminate. The how come I don't, I'm not concerned about that? I'm only concerned about things that is convenient. And I've convinced myself they're gonna do that because that will help. But mm, forget about the contamination of the air that I'm breathing. Suddenly there, I'm convinced that I'm powerful enough and I breathe in and my system internally will uh, kill the uh, impurities and the toxins to a limit and therefore as long as it's a normal air, I don't have to worry about contaminating. But in that same normal circumstances, a normal environment, I'm worried about cleaning my seats and, didn't, and this touch that and that touch that. Why? It's only in our mind, isn't it? Nobody else is doing it or not that many people. Why then? Everybody is just as smart as we are. How come they're not doing it? Because this is only in our thoughts. 
It has no actuality, no evidence, no scientific background about it that what we're doing actually combating anything or we should be doing it or it's a way to actually deal with something whether it's contamination, dirt or germs or fear of something bad going on. It's all in our thoughts. You have to understand and believe that this is accept the logic that this is in our thoughts. It's a thought that creates it. It's a suggestion. And we buy into that suggestion. A thought is so powerful. It's so powerful that can do magical powers that can actually be used for good. And I can actually show its power. I actually suggest you to watch the video I have that is an excerpt, excerpt of a, uh, it's, a, it's a short cut out, trimmed out of a portion of a, a 50 minute seminar I did at a local university about the end of fear, which includes in there a discussion about the power of mind and a demonstration of how thinking in a different way affects the law of physics. And for that, I invite you to take a look at the 59 second, not the 50 minutes, the long one, the complete one, that is called the end of fear. I want you to watch the 59 second export of it, I trimmed of it, that only shows the part that I am demonstrating how powerful, how ch what changes can be made by mere way of simply using the power of mind. A concentration. Not physical power, not muscle power, invisible power, mind power. Just thinking, just thinking. You will see that clear. Then you can see how powerful suggestion, thought, focus of thought, thinking in a certain way is, which can do such amazing thing, yet you are not convinced that it is in your thought that makes you believe that what you're doing is necessary. All these rituals and cleaning and all that so forth and contamination and germ and this and that so forth, it's all, you think it's legitimate, but it's all in your mind. It's a, a suggestion, it's a thought, it's an acceptance of a thought. If you understand this, it's a start of getting out of this pit that you've parked in and suffering through your life thinking that there are certain things I have to do. I have to do every day in order to keep my life balanced and protected. But once you understand the power of mind is actually what makes you believe into this, the suggestion, then you will have a good start to start diminishing what you're doing, clarifying and cleaning out this way of conditioning and recondition yourself unlearn the things that you become really good at it, which are all these crazy things that some of us do or done. And we all have some kind of it, mild or not, we all do. And it's all because of suggestion and a thought. It's a thought process. It's a thinking. It is not reality. It has no actuality. There's no truth to what it is you're afraid of that will happen if you don't do all these cleanups and so on over and over more than necessary and all this quarantining this and quarantining that and touching this and touching that and whatever else it is that you do in your way of OCD. It will be a way for you to wean yourself off of it logically and become inwardly focusing on it, that what is actually making you do all these things? That's the beginning of success. Beginning of freedom from mind. Because it is the mind that makes you do whatever it is that you do. It's nothing else. It's like someone who's got, uh, I don't know, um, um, anxiety out of fear but there's nothing there or paranoia you think there's something there, there's nothing there but it's the idea in the head that makes us have a certain paranoia because what we think and what we are scared of will never happen most probably it will never happen 
but we have created a thought and we believe the thought without any evidence necessary. We believe it, turn it into a religion. We believe, we have a belief now. And then we act on it, paranoia. There are many other reasons for it, but I'm not a doctor. I'm just talking layman, simple, to my understanding. So the same thing that we have created this, believing this thought, and we're reacting to it, as if it's really, as if it's, there's a truth to it. So the OCD, we've created that condition in our head, and we have, we're rolling with it. Now we need to break that cycle. To break that cycle, we need to understand these uh, three, four videos that I'm making, or whatever, how many videos are gonna be. In understanding the roots and beginning and the process and the stages that an idea, a suggestion, a fear, a concern, a pursuit in finding that elusive psychological security, a comfort, protection will lead into these behavior. When you believe something has validity with no evidence or proof, it's a belief. It's hard to combat belief unless you actually focus on how this came to be, how it took root. And then be truthful to yourself and go against your own thoughts, which is actually controlling you, making you believe in certain things that are not true. And then you take actions and you do all kind of weird things, crazy things. To the point that you may be driving and you want to turn right, say, oh, I gotta turn a little bit left and then right, a little bit left and then right, just because I think if I do that, then nothing bad will happen to me, but if I do it this way, that's gonna be crazy, it's gonna kill people, and damage and hazardous to your own health and life. It can go as far as that kind of shit. Are you responsible to stop it from now? Well, that could be far-fetched, what I said, but it is something that could affect many other parts of your life. That you actually end up sacrificing safety in order to justifying or pleasing certain kind of a mentality or the glitch in your mind that you've ended up believing in that thought. Which is nonsense, you shouldn't have. What happened to your logic? Use the same logic that you always had before you became the way you are, behaving the way you are, believing the way you are. When it was a day that everything was free and simple, you open the door, go out, come back in, take your shoes off, wash your hands and eat your food and do your homework and whatever it is that you would go to playground, play and don't worry about anything and just, you know, have to use sense, logic and common sense if something is uh, slimy or dirty or you know, looks like a vomit or looks like a spit or something, I don't touch it. A gum or something, I don't touch it. Something, I fall, it, it falls on the floor, I don't know what it is, I don't touch it. Okay, that's natural and common sense. But you play with the sand, you play with the things in it, you know, the, uh, the, the things you climb up and all that, and you come home, wash your hands, and eat your dinner. You know, those days, how simple things were. Why? Nothing has changed, the world hasn't changed. We are not living in a different planet that we used to live when we were kids. It's the same planet. If not even maybe in a way cleaner. Maybe talks in the air, but things are cleaner. But why is it that we feel that way? Hmm? It wasn't like that then. So why is it now there? Only a thought pattern has changed. It's a thought, it's a thinking. Nothing else is there, nothing has been added. No other aliens have come in and contaminated the world. It was like that when we were kids and we didn't care and we were all fine, nothing happened to us. Without doing any of this shit that we do, nothing happened to us. So why is it that we do it now? It's a thought. Watch that video that I said that how powerful the mind is, how powerful this power suggestion and thought is, and you will see that that power that can be used for such good things and give you determination, give you um, uh, encouragement, give you perseverance, give you focus, give you power that can also work against you if you actually allow it 
to suggest to you in negative way, which turns it turns you into doing what all these inconveniences they've created for yourself. Hmm? Makes sense, doesn't it? So, if you establish that it is all in your thought, then you will take the credibility out of all these things that you've been doing. When you take the credibility, you will start becoming clear in your head that you're following a shadow. You're following a fictitious belief, something that is useless and you're doing it just in order to make yourself comfortable. Well, let's make ourselves comfortable by being free from all this nonsense because none of it ever has anything to do with how good your life is or can be. In fact, if anything, that good life that you wanted to protect, that all those things that you were worried about, any harm coming to it, that's why you turned out this way, this actually is becoming very hindrant. It's, beca it's becoming a hindrance to your life and it's taking away your focus to build your life, make a difference, help yourself, enjoy your life, and just live. Life is short. We don't need to make it such a big pain in the butt just because some idea in our head. Stop believing your thoughts and start living with the actuality of life, not with the illusion of, oh, somebody, something happened to it and maybe it was because they didn't do these things uh, and uh, do I have to now do these other things in order to combat that possibility of happening, a bad thing happening like it happened to that person. Or you conjure up something in future that if I don't do this then I wouldn't be healthy or able to do whatever I want to achieve in the future. That's bullshit. You're losing the life today with all these things that you're conjuring up which none of them are true. So it's all in your thoughts and it's all thinking. If you agree to that, it's the beginning of reversing and not believing your thinking and focusing your thoughts, unleashing the power of your thoughts on not doing what it is that you've conditioned to do. Instead of having unleashed your thoughts in actually following and becoming a slave to a suggestion and doing all these crazy things because you have believed that you got to do this in order to protect certain idea or certain outcome or certain person or certain thing that you love in your life and you're doing all these crazy things. Use it to your advantage. Your mind is under your command. It's for you to make your life better not to control your life and make you do things. It is you who's supposed to use your mind to make life easier for you, not to listen to the garbage that comes out of your mind, which many of the thoughts that come to your mind appears in your mind is just nonsense. And it's, as I said in the other video, it's a feces, is an exhaust of the mechanical process and the material process of the functioning of your brain. And like any other machine that we have, feces we got we have exhaust when you have when you create something when a manufacturing creates something there's some they create something and then there's some exhaust and residues and things that got to be disposed of anything has that anything that produces something has something that is needs to be disposed of exhaust feces residues things that are no good and got to be disposed of the mind has the same and many of these thoughts are the feces, are the exhaust of the manufacturing plants that we call mind, brain. That because it creates something, thought, it also creates lots of nonsense. With all the good thoughts that we have, also other residues and exhaust of thoughts are these things that makes us believe in certain weird things and we do weird things. And we gotta learn how to recognize these feces, these thoughts, exhaust and not pay attention to them, not entertain them, not look at them, not consider them as having any value and not to abide by their they're actually suggesting and just simply pass by just like it is throwing it in the garbage. By noticing the negative thoughts and these sort of fearful thoughts and things that wants to make you do some silly things, just notice it but don't act on it. 
just move on. It's just like you saw a dog shit while you're walking on the street, but you don't go and poke on it and say, oh, is it really, is it really, what is it, how does it smell? You don't do that. You just see it, okay, I recognize it's there, no fucking, uh, okay, I, I, I saw it, uh, fine, uh, and you walk on. Continue your path. Some word came out of my mouth, sounded bad, but <laughs> it was supposed to say so fine, but it came out something else. Anyhow, I hope you didn't get it, because I got it, <laughs> but it wasn't meant to be. Anyhow, so when you actually focus and recognize a negative thought has appeared in your head, all you have to do is, okay, I see it, but I'm not going to entertain it. I'm not going to expand on it. I'm not going to act on it. That's the way to dispose of the feces, the exhaust of the thought. So, having said all that, perhaps this was another uh, segment of helpful video for you to ponder and evaluate your process of thinking, and perhaps that will help you to be a good start to start reversing the OCD that we all have a kind of it, mild or not, and uh, hopefully this would be a video helping you to move on from this entanglement that we are all sometimes, or some of us, or many of us had been involved in it or still dealing with it. I'll talk to you soon.